basically, y'all know on Mondays I try and do something a little teachy. My voice is feeling kind of scratchy, so I'm not like, trying to go too long into something. But there was a concept that I wanted to talk about because it's useful for me for all kinds of things uh, when it comes to fighting games. It comes from martial arts. The concept is called degrees of resistance. Um, and essentially, I mean, think of it like this. Martial arts are about practicing um, fucking people up, right? Like, that's the base use case for martial art is you're trying to learn how to fuck somebody up. Now, there's a lot of stuff that's attached to this, right? Like, hey, some martial arts are better at fucking people up than others. Other, some martial arts have different, like, learning and teaching techniques in order to teach you how to fuck someone up. But the base use case for any given martial art is, like, at the end of the day, you're trying to learn how to fight. Um, and if you're trying to learn how to fight, there you can run into problems, right? One of the problems that you can run into is that uh, you may find that in the process of learning how to fuck someone up, you are fucking people up too much. And so, uh, you know, thanks, Luis. I appreciate it. Um, so in the process of learning how to fuck someone up, you might have actually fucked someone up. Right? Which makes it hard for them to learn. So if you have people who are trying to learn how to fight better, they need to be able to modulate the intensity that they're bringing to the practice. Because if you're just going at 100%, if you're just trying to fuck the other person up all the time, uh, people are going to get hurt and people are going to stop practicing with you before you get to really learn how shit works. Right? And so we get this concept of degrees of resistance. And essentially, yeah, the basic idea is just how hard are you trying to fuck someone up? And I want to note that in the context of martial arts, this seems pretty obvious, but people usually do not grow from going 100% all the time, right? Like, if I am trying to actually learn a martial art, whether it's boxing, whether it's jiu-jitsu, whether it's karate, whatever the fuck it is, and I just walk into a gym or a dojo or wherever you practice this, and I'm like, give me your strongest, and I'm going to try and beat him, and I'm just going to keep on doing it, right? Or give me anybody, and I'll just keep on fighting until I beat him. Like, I'm not learning anything. No one's going to want to practice with me, right? There's a certain amount of cooperation that you need from the people you're practicing with in order to effectively learn how to fuck someone up together, right? And if you're going all hard all the time, like, yeah, that's, you could think about practice in, in that sense, right? Where I'm like, oh, I'm just constantly trying to try my best and, and go hard and test my A game and blah, 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 blah. The problem is that that actually prevents you from experimenting, right? And, and this makes sense if you think about it in fighting games too, right? Like, if you got a homie who just is always trying super hard to win and is never, tr is never relaxing and is never just chilling out a little bit and trying to, like, see how stuff works, right? If they just take whatever it is they know as the best possible technique or set excuse me set of techniques and they keep on going for that all the time like they're probably not going to learn that much because they're too busy worried about winning all the time right so in video games this, seem, this can actually seem a little weird until you think about it right like shouldn't you always be trying to win that's the point of a competitive game right and it is the point for a competitive game in the short term, right? But the problem is if you're telling yourself to do that all the time, if you're too focused on whether you're winning or losing, you're going to have a hard time actually learning, right? You won't be experimenting. If I go into a new game and I'm trying to go 100%, right? What the fuck does that mean? I don't know how to play this game, right? So you've got to turn it down a little bit. you got to turn down your degree of resistance, right? Um, in order to experiment, because in experimenting, you learn how shit works. And as you learn how shit works, you get a better idea of what you're actually supposed to be doing, right? So why is this important for Guilty Gear? Well, this is something that we had to learn how to do in the arcades, right? Back in the day when fighting games were all played in arcades, because you couldn't really find anywhere else to play them, um, you couldn't be guaranteed that a like steady stream of people who are roughly your level, as determined by a... Um, by, a, you know, an algorithm that ranks people, right? You can't be ass in assured that there's going to be coming, th that that kind of person will be coming through all the time. Yo, uh, Desmindo, thanks for the follow, homie. Right? Sometimes you go to the arcade and everyone there is fucking free. And you can go there and you can whoop on them, but that brings you a problem, right? One problem is if you keep on whooping on them, uh, they might not come back and then you have no one to play with. Another problem you might have is that, uh, they're, like, you're not going to get any better from that because uh, you're just going to be doing the same shit over and over and over to whoop them, right? However, what you learn how to do as a better player in the arcades is you learn how to control your degree of resistance, right? You might see a total scrub come up and be like, well, I got to get something out of this, right? 
I, playing a human being is generally better than not playing a human being. Um, if for no other reason than if they're putting quarters into the machine, you still get to play as long as you're winning. And you don't really have to, like, if, there, if the skill gap is really big, you don't really have to worry about it, and you get to stay on the machine, which is cool. Whereas otherwise, if no one is there, then you're just going to play against the computer, which is boring as shit and won't really give you much of anything. It's not even, like, an optimal training environment, right? Um, and so... You learn how to like play with the newbies in a way where like, oh, they feel like they almost won, right? Or maybe they are close. And yeah, you're not trying your hardest, but you get to experiment with some shit you wouldn't otherwise be doing, whether it's different characters or playing some like off meta stuff or just experimenting with your regular shit, but not doing what you always do, right? And you get to keep them playing, right? And they get to learn something and they get to have fun and you get to have fun, right? And you do that. They're probably playing 100%. It's just that their 100% fucking sucks because they're no good, right? Which is fine. They'll learn how to play over time. But you don't have to go 100% against them. You can go 60% or 50% and that's fine, right? This is, that is a good thing, right? You, need to, you, you get to learn how to play against other people. And you can use the, the opportunity to play against people who are significantly weaker than you to test shit out, right? So this is a, this is a process you actually like, often have to learn how to do specifically, right? You have to learn how to lower your degree of resistance, right? So one of the things you can do is you can just let them attack you a lot and practice blocking, right? That's really useful in Guilty Gear, right? You're going to need to know how to block everyone anyway, right? Why not give them the advantage and let them you know, go in for a couple freak strings while you just practice blocking, right? But you can always also practice lower confidence techniques, right? So for me, for example, like this combo right here, which I'm probably going to drop. Yup. No. Oh my god. There we go. That combo right there is something which I'm probably not going to do if I'm playing online and there's like a long ass line for the cabinet. But if I'm just playing against someone and there's no line and they're not really that good, yeah, I'll go for that combo and I'll try and practice it. Right? That combo is not in my 100% confidence. I'm probably not going for that in a tournament situation. For me, that, le that specific combo is closer to like 50%, right? Um, and so I'll go, I'll, I'll go for it against opponents where I think I can play at 50% and, and still win. Or if I lose, there's no cost to me, right? What up, everyone? Thanks for coming through. So yeah, practicing blocking. Practicing lower confidence, confidence techniques, like both of these are things that you can do to lower your degree of resistance, right? Which means you get to learn better, and it means the other person gets to have a better time, right? Uh, you can also learn to like impose restrictions on your play. So sometimes if I'm playing, I'll look at the clock and I'll be like, um, if the first digit is even in the timer, then I'm going to attack. And if the first digit is odd, then I'm going to just defend, right? And doing that can give you like, a, a different tool to like mix up the flow on how you play, right? So there's all these different things. Like a lot of learning how to play fighting games is learning how to put your mind into different places Negative so that it penalty. solves problems from a different angle, right? You gotta learn to experiment in this game. It's easy to just do the shit you already know how to do, right? So this is especially important for Guilty Gear because in a match made game, right? Like Street Fighter, if you enter the matchmaking queue, What's going to happen is you're just going to get paired up with someone who is uh, who is basically the machine, you know, whatever, whatever ranking algorithms uh, Capcom uses to determine Street Fighter skill, they've got one and it just pairs you up with someone that is a good enough match, you know, and is like close enough that it's not too laggy and blah, 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 right? Which means that you can pretty much assume based on that context that someone is, that whoever's playing, especially in ranked queue, is going to be playing at like 100%, right? Which is fine. You go to ranked queue knowing that. The problem is if that's all you're doing, then you don't get to, to, to kind of stretch yourself in a different direction. So you don't learn how to experiment and play in the same way, right? And in Guilty Gear, it's important because we don't have a queue that works, right? You go to ranked queue, you're going to be paired up against someone from Japan who's going to give you like 15 frames of lag. It's going to fucking suck, right? And so instead, we play in player match where there is no skill-based matchmaking and where, like the arcades, you kind of can't really control what you get, right? So if you're, if you're a, a player that realizes you're playing against someone who's a lot weaker, right, you could just blow them the fuck up, but you don't get anything out of that, they don't get anything out of that, and they're probably going to stop playing Guilty Gear if that happens to them all the time, right? Plus, you're going to stop playing Guilty Gear if that happens all the time because you won't have anyone to play with, right? And no one's going to be getting better, and everything's just going to suck all the time, right? This is why it's important. 
right? It's important for you to be able to modify your degree of resistance because that's how you learn, but it's also important because that's how we learn how to be better to other people while we're beating the shit out of them, right? These games are rough, man. Like, if you do not know how to play Guilty Gear, you're gonna spend a whole lot of time wishing that you could block, right? You will be getting your ass kicked. You'll be getting pasted all around the screen, the game's gonna tell you, oh, you could have done something there, but you didn't. Ha ha. Why didn't you do something, dumbass? Right? These games are super hard to play, right? And when you're new at this, it's ass. So if you're just blowing up some newbie, you could actually make something useful for both of you out of that. You just gotta learn how to turn it down a bit and focus on doing the shit that you don't know how to do quite so well, right? Like, don't worry about exposing holes in their game. Don't worry about like the you know like busting out the crazy setup that they that they haven't figured out how to block ten times in a row. It's fine. They're probably not gonna do it in that session. Adapting in the middle of the session or in the middle of the game is really hard, especially if you're not used to it, right? So you 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 want to learn how to escape or how to experiment. Because it's good for you, but also because it's good for them. God damn, I'm dropping this combo. There. It's good for you, it's good for them, it's good for the game. It's what's going to get people to keep playing Guilty Gear. And it also kind of is the reason all of us play Guilty Gear, right? Like, we're playing to win, but we're also playing because this is an enjoyable thing we can do with other people. If Guilty Gear was miserable to play with other people, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't get behind it. I wouldn't tell other people to play it. No, this game rocks. But this game rocks especially when people are able to do shit like change their degree of resistance so that you're not making shit miserable for someone literally all the time because that just means that no one's getting anything out of it so to recap degrees of resistance resistance is an important skill comes from martial arts and the basic idea is just learning how to vary how hard you try right and i want to end on something important which is like some of the best feelings that you can get in fighting games is the feeling of like just narrowly pulling out a close set, right? So you're playing against somebody, they're at about your level, you're at about their level, you do some shit, they do some shit, you adapt, they adapt. Like win or lose, you get that like, oh, that was a good set. I felt challenged. I felt like I was learning something. I felt like I was playing really well. Like that's all great. That satisfaction is great. You're not gonna get it all the time. And sometimes you might not actually have learned anything from that set. It just might have felt really good, right? And you kind of can't trust your feelings to tell you if you're learning or not, right? Um, and so that's one of the reasons why I think this is important, right? Like, if you just blow the fuck up out of newbies trying to find the person who will give you the good set, you're missing out on an opportunity to level up, but you're also missing out on an opportunity to, like, to help that other person level up too right? Neither of you are getting that satisfaction. And I don't want you to confuse the satisfaction of like, uh, oh, we, you know, like we had a good fight, bro, with like actual productive shit you could be learning, right? That satisfaction is great. It is absolutely one of the main reasons why I play fighting games, right? But as you get better at varying your degree of resistance, as you get better at experimenting, you learn how to do, like how to have fun with people who are not good at this game, right? When I do the one-on-one -on -one lessons, Wednesday and Thursday, and if you're new to the stream here, welcome to the stream, I do one-on-one -on -one lessons Wednesday and Thursday, where I just let whoever wants to come in and play some games with me, play some games with me, and then we go over what it is they did well and what it is they could have kind of improved, right? I don't just do it for them. It's, it, I hope it's useful for them. But I do it for me, too, because I need practice learning, at what pe learning to see what people are good at and what people still need to work on, right? Not only as a coach and as a, as a teacher, but as a player. One of the ways that I can learn, even if I'm playing people who are weaker than me, is to get good at understanding where a player's strengths and weaknesses are. And some of the people I play, like, they're still super new to the game, and so the advice I give them is, you know, tailored for that. And some of the people I play are, like, close to me in ability, and I have... It is because I played the weaker pl against the weaker players and taught them some stuff that I have an idea of what, like, the folks around my level can do better or worse. And I wouldn't necessarily have that understanding if I hadn't practiced it on people who are weaker than I, right? So ultimately, you can get to the point where you can beat up newbies, and not only do they get something out of it, you get something out of it, and they feel, and everyone feels great. And that's basically the idea behind this stream. So, TLDR, be nice to the noobs, um, not only for their sake, but also for yours, and get good at playing in a way that allows for skill, skill mismatch, that get good at being able to experiment, right? You can do that, you can get good at anything. So with that, my sermon is over. 
Um, let's play some fucking video games, y'all.